Good evening to all of you. Authors, uh, publishing directors from the union, the conference, and our LMS uh, officers. We are very happy to uh, service our students here in the university. Okay, this is my first time, I think, to speak in, uh, in this crowd. And uh, we are very happy that uh, more and more Colpol Tours are um, employing their talents in the, in the Lord's work, especially in the university. Um, nung panahon namin, uh, hindi po ganito kadami yung uh, mga Colpol Tour dito sa university. Perhaps there were only about, you know, uh, handful of people who uh, goes to literature evangelism because it was required. It was required by the College of Theology. I don't know if there is another department that requires it. And I'm very happy also, along with the publishing ministry, the, the youth ministry, the Master Guide is also flourishing in this campus. Amen? I've heard that there were about 200 who, who applied for the Master Guide. So in the same way, we are doing all our best to train our young people in the work of God. This evening, I was tasked to discuss um, the reach up. You know, we are in the LNG White uh, Department. We are in the White Estate and uh, we want to promote as much as possible the proper understanding of Ellen White's writings because this gift brings us closer to God. Amen? The gift of prophecy brings us closer to God. And we're very excited. By the way, we, parang meron tayong ano, uh, I don't know who among you here, I, I hope you could promote from your churches our upcoming SOP, uh, first CLC wide SOP Congress. Uh, those who are, we invite the elders, the SOP uh, directors of the churches, and the publishing directors of the churches. Okay? So that will be next week, 16 and 17, sir, no? 16 and 17, that is the first SOP Congress. So um, pray for us, pray for uh, those who will be going there. Hopefully, uh, lumaki ng lumaki itong uh, movement na to ng spirit of prophecy. The, um, my topic this evening talks about the major themes in the writings of Ellen G. White. Why is it important for us to know the major themes in the writings of Ellen White? Whenever we talk about Ellen White, she writes volumes and volumes of, you know, books and writings, I mean, manuscripts, about hundred thousands of manuscripts. But along her writings, you can only categorize them in several themes. And these themes are very important. Why? Because Ellen White's themes in, the, in, the, in her writings are his distinctive characteristic as a writer. In fact, there were many accusations of plagiarism, accusations of literary bar borrowing. Nevertheless, in her writings, though she borrows from other literature, she writes it in a consistent theme. And sabi nung isang lawyer, she writes it as not as a slave to, to the literature which he borrowed, which she borrowed, but he le uh, she lets the literature which she borrowed a slave of her own theme. So meaning, uh, she has a peculiar, unique way of translating the information into a marvelous, reflective work. Okay? So what Ellen White's writings are all about. Nabasa nyo na ba lahat ng mga writings ni Ellen White? Ilan dito nakatapos na ng isang libro ni Ellen White? Taas ang kamay. Praise God. Yan, yan, yan. Dalawa. Praise God. Lima. O, oh, pakunti na lang pakunti. So, how many are these books? Okay? Don't worry about how many. Worry about what are the things she was talking about. So, let, let us talk about what she talks about and how does it help us. You know, if you want to know more about this, Mas maganda kung mabasa nyo ito from uh, George Knight's Meeting Ellen White. Okay? Ellen White is not a theologian per se. Please, 
hindi natin siya pwedeng uh, sabing authority sa theology, pero ang kanya mga reflections, ang kanya mga reflections are so wonderful that even theologians are amazed of how she reflects. In fact, walang theologian na nakasulat na kasindami ng isinulat ni Ellen White. And, though she might not be the basis of our doctrine, it is the Bible that is the basis of our doctrine, but her reflections are wonderful. Her insights are wonderful. In fact, bukas I'll be preaching in, in Ayas, the divine service, and I use her reflections, though I do not say it comes from her, <laughs> But, you know, insightful, um, this is very, um, the, the insights in Ellen White is very, uh, it is very informative. A theme represents an idea or a concept that helps us understand her writings, her theology, and her burden for individuals and the church. So very consistent siya sa mga themes na meron siya. And perhaps these themes, pagka lagi ninyong binabasa ang writings ni Ellen White, kapag kasumulat kayo ng iba't ibang mga books ninyo, o mga assignment ninyo, usually, nagre-reflect kayo in the same way na nagre-reflect si Ellen White. I have a paper now, I'm writing with Dr. Campbell, ang aking, ano, ang aking writing side, the Ellen White's Reflection of the Reformation. Kasi next year will be the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther's nailing of the, Reforma uh, of the uh, 95 Theses. Ano na siya? Now, the, these themes are integrated in various strands of Ellen White's writings into a unified network of one, of one concept. They provide interpretative framework for not only single documents or books, but the entire sectors of Ellen White's writings. Perhaps many of these themes are actually what? Adapted by the Seventh-day Adventists. Say, for example, the Three Angels' Message. Sinabi natin Three Angels' Message, we adopt this theme. What about great controversy? Great controversy. Um, pag tinignan natin ang great controversy, kung wala yung theme ni Ellen White ng good and evil, halos parang compilation lang siya ng iba't ibang mga writings. But because of her reflection on the, uh, of the controversy between good and evil, we see now the world in another perspective. These are the major themes of her writings. Love of God, Great Controversy, Jesus, the Cross and Salvation, Centrality of the Bible, Second Coming of Jesus, the Third Angel's Message and the Advent Mission, Practical Christianity, and Character Development. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven major themes of her writings. So whenever you are reading Ellen White's writings, think about this theme. Usually she operates her all her writings in this major themes within that bracket. Perhaps the central and the most comprehensive theme of the writings of Ellen White is the love of God. So all other themes are what? Has its hub. And the main hub is the love of God. The love of God and then it goes through. What is the first chapter of the Steps to Christ? God's love for man. What is the first word? What are the first words of the Steps to Christ? Nature and revelation alike testify of God's love. See, it's always love that she wants to talk about. You see, uh, do we want to talk about love whenever we preach, whenever we talk, whenever we speak, or we converse? This is the theme that she repeatedly mentions and discusses in her books. God is love appears in the Patricks and Prophets. It first appears, the first three words of the Patricks and Prophets is God is love. And the last three words of the great controversy, God is love. You can just imagine how many times did she say God is love. Perhaps John the Revelator, or say John the Beloved, main theme in whatever she write, he writes is in God's love. So also, Ellen White writes uh, more about this. In Ellen White's writings, God's love is a central point of the great struggle between good and evil. There were good and there were evil people because many do not believe that God is love. And those who believe that God is love is what? Now it becomes the demarcation line between good and evil. Whether you believe that God is love 
or you do not believe. God is love is a phrase that provides the context of her telling the great controversy. So, by the way, the whole Conflict of the Ages series actually is the, is, is, has a context of the great controversy. The battle between good and evil, the battle between Satan and his host and Jesus Christ and his angels. This is a constant battle that does not only happen in the past, it happens in the present and even in the future. So you can see that at the very introduction of the great controversy. The battle of good and evil in the past, in the present, and in preparation for the future. The first chapter of Steps to Christ begins with the word nature and revelation alike. Testify of God's love. So whether you look at nature, which is the how do we call it? The, what kind of revelation is nature? General revelation. And what about Jesus Christ? Okay. Jesus Christ is the exact manifestation of that revelation. And special, uh, special revelation is the written word of God. So God is love is the first chapter of uh, Steps to Christ. Nature and revelation alike testify of God's love. Sir. Okay, now let's see how she writes it in Steps of Christ, page 9 to 10. The world, through fall, though fallen, is not all sorrow and misery. In nature itself are messages of hope and comfort. There are flowers upon the thistles, and the thorns are covered with roses. God is love. So what is written in all corners, wherever you go? God is love. In fact, Ellen White was trying to say that it's hard to be astray. It's hard to be astray. It's even harder to go to hell than to go to heaven. Why? Because you need to constantly reject the love of God in order for you to go to hell. And how are you going to reject the love of God? You can see it everywhere. Even if the earth is well nigh obliterated. You can still see the love of God. Even with the evil person, you can see the love of God. Why? Because it is embedded in every nerve, every faculty of the soul. Everywhere you go is embedded with God's love. See, even in the evil person, he gives what? To his son. The best. What? Because this is the love of God written in every heart. Though the world may be fallen, Yet Ellen White points out that the things of nature in the world of sin but imperfectly represent his love. Yes, it may imperfectly represent his love, but at least you can still see and browse and peep on the love of God. The supreme and clearest illustration of God's love for us is God sending Jesus to save us from our sin. So she writes down everything and focuses it on Jesus Christ because only Jesus Christ is the profound, the most profound, the most, the highest form of knowing the love that comes from God. So if you know Jesus Christ, you would know God because God is love. In the first chapter, The Desire of Ages, she points out that Jesus came to reveal the light of God's love. So Jesus Christ came to reveal the, the love. <clears throat> you know, in the Bible, in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14, what does it say? And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory like unto the Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the character of Jesus Christ reveals the character of God Himself. So if you would come to know Jesus Christ, you would come to know God. Because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father, meaning no one would know the, the real character of the Father unless they know Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And if, you know, Jesus Christ draws everyone to him, he draws everyone to God himself, which is uh, who is love. Sir, ano nangyari? I'll see. Both the redeemed and the unfallen beings will find in the cross of Christ their science and their song. So when you're reading Ellen White, reflecting on this, 
Ellen White's highest science is the science of the cross. So kung meron kayong time para mag-study ng science, you should always have a time to study the cross. Ellen White was saying that we should devote much of our time in the last chapter of Christ's life. Why? Because there he revealed the highest point of his own glory. The, the character of Christ was crucified on the cross. It will be seen that the glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ and the glory of self-sacrificing love, the, the benevolence of Jesus Christ, the, the so-called disinterested benevolence of Jesus Christ was shown in the cross. He gave himself without any return. Why? Because he wanted us to know that this is the unconditional love of, Jesus, of God, his Father. And so that we may know that God is love in the light from Calvary, it will be seen that the law of self-renouncing love is the law of life for earth and heaven, that love which seeketh not her own has its source in the heart of God. You know, if we just would know the real character of God, it would be very comfortable for us to go to heaven. If we would just would like to go to heaven without knowing the character of God, we would fear heaven because we would fear God. See, one way of barring us to go to heaven is for you to have the wrong concept of God. And if you have the wrong concept of God, then you would not want to go to heaven. You might have another view of heaven. Perhaps this earth becomes heaven because heaven becomes dreadful for you because God is not love. But if you would come to know Jesus Christ, it would be easy for you to go to heaven. Why? Because your heart yearns for the same character that God wants you to have and that in the meek and lowly one is the manifested the character of him who dwelleth in the light which no man can approach unto so if we can only penetrate in the heart of Jesus Christ and be shredded by his own love we would not see the dims of this earth anymore and will be filled with the love of Jesus Christ and this love that lights up the whole world destroys anything that what anything that captivates you to this earth now and that so on the last page of the desire of ages our conclusion is that through Christ love has conquered you like that through Christ Love has conquered. Remember Romans chapter 8? That we are more than conquerors with Christ. How are we going to be more than conquerors with Christ? Romans chapter 8 was explaining that nor life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from the love of God. It's the love of God that is unconquerable. It's the love of God that is undestroyable. When you have the love of God, you are more than conquerors with Christ because no one can separate you from this love. Even if death would separate you from Christ, if you have the same love with Christ, love will conquer. So this is the everlasting theme of the great controversy and perhaps the, the desire of ages. The great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. This is the last, ch last chapters. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. So there is only one pulse. You know, have you looked at the um, vascular cell, the cardiovascular cell or cardio cell? When you separate the one cell to the, the whole cardio, it beats not the same. Okay? Not the same beating. But if you idikit mo lang siya ng konti, it will beat the same. So ganito nangyari sa atin. When we are separated from Christ, our beatings are not the same. It's different. Pero pag dinikit tayo kay Christ, we have the same beat. So Christ wants us to be drawn closer to Him so that we would have the same beat as His. Amen? One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation from Him who created all flow, life, and light, and gladness throughout the realms of Ill, uh, illimitable space from the minutest atom to the greatest world, all things animate and inanimate in 
in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy declare that God is love. If God would only restore the whole universe according to His beat, and what is God's beat? Love. 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 Satan, when he went out from heaven, in fact, when he coveted God's position, destroyed the heartbeat of love. And he started to have envy, he started to have pride, he started to have covetousness and selfishness within himself. And he started to what? He started to disperse this kind of spirit all throughout the world. And Christ wants to redeem this beat from us. The beat that yearns for the love of God, which is pure, unselfish, and disinterested in its benevolence. Amen? The themes, the second theme is the great controversy. The theme of the of love of God and the great controversy are closely interconnected. So if you do not understand the love of God, you might not as well understand the great controversy. My son, have you seen me in, uh, uh, me post in the Facebook that my son one, one time, while he was yet uh, almost sleeping, I overheard that he asked the question to his mother. And he said, Ma, mommy, sinong gumawa kay Satan? This is four years old speaking. Sabi niya, si Jesus. Eh, bakit siya masama? Sabi nung asawa ko, Daddy, nagtatanong yung anak mo, sagutin mo. Sabi ko, ikaw ang tinatanong, ba't ako sasagot? Sabi ko, pagkakataon mo na yan. Sabi ko, kaya nga hindi ka nagtrabaho para ikaw ang magmissionary sa anak mo eh. So, in-explain nung asawa ko. In-explain nung asawa ko. Pinost ko sa Facebook, tapos nag-react si Dr. Campbell. Sabi niya, ah, maganda yung curiosity ka sa, sa, sa Ayas. Pag may tanong ka, nako, tiba-tiba ka. Kasi ang problema sa Ayas, kapag wala kang tanong, hindi ka makakasulat. Pag marami kang tanong, makakasulat, mas marami kang masusulat. Amen? So I would say that we should understand what this God, love of God is because we cannot fully understand the great controversy unless we know the love of God. Have you read the steps to Christ? How many times? You know, my wife was a Seventh-day Adventist. She was born Seventh-day Adventist. She came to university. She was a sixth batch, 1,000 missionary. But when we required her to read the Steps of Christ because of the, the Master Guide, first time she became a Christian. Amen? You might be an Adventist, but if you don't understand the love of God, you are not a Christian. Huh? Pwede kang maging Seventh-day Adventist na hindi Christian. And in fact, wala rin namang Seventh-day Adventist na hindi Christian. So maybe you are just pretending to be a Seventh-day Adventist. But I would say that unless you understand the cry of 1888, the love of God, you will never fully understand why you are an Adventist. Okay? So Mrs. White emphasizes repeatedly that the focal point of the great controversy is Satan's aim to misrepresent the loving character of God. So as tours, what are we bringing there? Books? Are we bringing books? Or are we bringing this theme? We should be bringing this theme. In our mouth is the love of God. And in our mouth is the reflection of the great controversy. No theologians, I mean, not all theologians has the same reflection. The Seventh-day Adventist has the purest reflection of the battle between good and evil. In fact, there are religions that does not Acknowledge that there are actually angels fighting each other. They acknowledge that they may be God, but not actually angels actively participating in the whole affairs of humanity. So, Satan's aim, what is the aim of Satan? Satan's aim in the great controversy? To misrepresent the loving character of God. And as Kolpol Tours, our work is to restore the lost image of God in man. How? First, by restoring to them the true knowledge of the character of God. Amen? And how could they be restored if they are just looking at the television and uh, they're looking at the Catholic doctrine or perhaps other doctrine that cast fear instead of love for God? Tama mali. 
They're casting fear instead of love for God. And perhaps many Seventh-day Adventists are also doing so, especially when we are appealing that when you want to be, sa uh, you want to be saved from the seven last plagues and all the beasts, you ought to be baptized and become a Seventh-day Adventist. And out of fear, people would want to become a Seventh-day Adventist. And this is a misrepresentation of God's love. Ah, wala na tayo dun sa eternal fire. Pero kung manakot naman tayo, on the side ng 666, on the side ng ganito, di ba? So I would say that as uh, culpultors, we ought to know better than that. Satan led men to conceive of God as a being whose chief attribute is what? Stern justice, one who is severe judge, a harsh exacting creditor. Remember Martin Luther? Martin Luther became a monk. Why? Because of fear. One time, he was contemplating of, you know, wanting to serve God, but he just wanted to linger with the world. And one time, the thunder stroke and almost that he was hit. And because of this fear, he went to the monastery out of the knowledge of his own parents. And when he was there, he lived in fear. He lived in fear. And every day, he is being, what, castigated by the demon. And he was like, what, battling against Satan and against his own conscience until one day he went to, he went to the Vatican. He wanted to know how to become righteous. And he paid all his indulgences, and yet his conscience still bears what? The stern anger of God against him. And so he walked the pilgrimage. He went step by step until he saw the text, the just shall live by faith. And then he tried to question this. Why is the, how, how will the just live by faith? He went back to his university. He studied the Bible, and there, as an open light for him, he found peace. That God is love. And that God does not require perfection. He says, et picator, That at the same time while you were yet sinner, you can be righteous. And while you are righteous, you remain a sinner. Why? Because your nature is a sinner and yet you still hang on to the righteousness that comes from Christ and Christ alone. Even the good works you do does not come from you. It comes from the righteousness of Christ on the cross. Daily you are walking through this faith. And because of this, he wanted all the people to know about the character of God. But how could they know if they don't have the Bible? He translated the Bible in 11 weeks in the New Testament in German. In the castle. Amen? And when he translated it, printing and the, fir the, 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 the success of the Reformation was in printing. In Wycliffe's time, there were no handset printers, uh, yung, uh, movable printers. But in Martin Luther's time, even his 95 Thesis on Righteousness by Faith was quickly printed all throughout Europe and the Reformation started. It was, it was the Word of God. It was the printer that made the what? The Reformation quick. Amen? So Ellen White was trying to say, t tell us that if the love of God will be printed all throughout the world and people would come to know of the love of God, they would be revived. They would be changed. And the world will never be the same again. Amen? So we have a mission. We have a mission. He pictured the Creator as a being who is watching with jealous eye to discern the errors and mistakes of men that he may visit judgment upon them. It was to remove this dark shadow by revealing to the world an infinite love of God that Jesus came to live among men. The Son of God came from heaven to make manifest the Father. Now it makes sense why Jesus died. Jesus did not die just to sacrifice for you. Jesus died so that the sacrifice of God would be a manifestation of the exact character of the love of God that is willing to love you willing to save you, and willing to use you to save others. Amen? Use you to save others. The great controversy Satan aims is also to represent God's law. Oh, what about God's law? Ah, God's law is God's caprice. You have to, you have to do this, you have to do that, because, because just, God just wants you to do it. In Ellen White's thoughts, the character of God and the law of God are not to 
elements but one. Martin Luther's thought was not like this. The love of God is just the, the, the law of God is just a rep representation of his what? Of his will, but not his character. So that he says that, you know, if you don't keep the Sabbath, it's okay. J he said that if you, if you have the first commandment, if you obey the first commandment, you don't need to obey the last nine commandments. Why? Because the first commandment represents everything and the nine commandments is just a manifestation of the first commandment. So that you don't commit adultery because you don't want adultery to be God. You don't keep the Sabbath because you don't want the Sabbath to be your God. See, all else centered to God. Perhaps it was successful, but not as successful as revealing the real love and the character of God. Satan represents God's law of love as a law of selfishness. He declares that it is impossible for us to obey its precepts. From the very beginning of the great controversy in heaven, it has been Satan's purpose to overthrow the law of God. We have to tell the people, we have to tell the whole world that God's law is the manifestation of God's love. If you obey the law, then you can see within yourself the love of God. Take, take for example, not only the moral law. Let's take for example the health laws. Health laws. Did God create the health laws for himself or for you? If you obey the health laws, would God be benefited or you? Say for example, adultery. If you would not if you would not keep the law of God in adultery, would it benefit you? No. Diba? So if you keep it, it would benefit you. Would it benefit God? It wouldn't. But if you keep the law of God and, you know, as a manifestation of your love for God, it becomes a living witness to others that you indeed are benefited by the law which God gave you, which is beneficial rather than arbitrary. Now, in the great controversy, God fights against this misrepresentation. The history of the great conflict between good and evil from the time it first began in heaven to the final overthrow of the rebellion and the total eradication of sin is also a demonstration of God's unchanging love. So the whole conflict of the 6,000 years are all demonstration of God's love and for eternity we shall study the 6,000 years of God's manifestation of His love. Because this 6,000 years was the worst in the history of eternity. And in this worst, God did His best. Amen? Nung worst ang mundo, ginawa ng Diyos ang kanyang best. So that it returns not only to become best, it becomes excellent for eternity. Amen? What other themes are there? Now, the great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. How? How did God do that? By manifesting His love. And those who do not believe in love, the consequence will be what? Will be dreadful. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats through the vast creation. I already read this, and you know the result. What about Jesus, the cross, and salvation? This is also one of the themes of Mrs. White's writings, especially the desire of ages, steps to Christ, sanctified life, thoughts from the Mount of Blessing. Okay, God's foremost demonstration of His love in the great controversy was sending Jesus to redeem humanity. It was to remove this dark shadow by revealing the world, the infinite love of God that Jesus came to live among men. So, not only to save us, but for us to manifest for him to manifest the love of God. Because unless we understand the love of God, we cannot be saved. Remember Romans, um, Romans chapter 2, verse 4, the, the goodness of God leads us to, to repentance. Goodness daw ng Diyos ang naglilid sa atin sa repentance. Paano kung hindi mo alam ang goodness ng Diyos? Paano kung sinirasiraan ng Diyos ng ibang tao? 
then you don't have the right concept of that goodness. How would you repent? Would you repent because you feel that you are a sinner? No. No sinner repents because he is a sinner. He repents because he believes that he could come freely with his own folly and weakness and all the what? Out of all the wild imaginations, he can still come to God right now. Kahit na walang purity sa isip mo, if you believe that you can come to Christ today, this moment, you can come to Christ and at this moment, you can claim salvation. Hindi ka na maghihintay pa na maging pure ka, maging ano ka pa. No. Ellen White was trying to say that it is not conditioned to, your, to, to what you are. It is conditioned to what you can believe as it is in Jesus. Amen? As it is in Jesus. Satan's charges are and his character unveiled. How did Christ did this? On the cross. On the cross, Jesus did his best. On the cross, Satan did his worst. Amen? It might be that he did his best, but actually in the sight of the universe, it was the worst manifestation of Satan's character, and on the cross was the best manifestation of God's character. For Ellen White, Jesus was not only victorious redeemer over the forces of evil, he is a very personal friend to her and the Savior who died on the cross for each individual human being. From time to time, when Ellen White would pray in a congregation, she would begin with the, with the word, My Father, instead of Our Father. How do we pray individually? I mean, in our own closet. Are we really close to our father? To my father? Ellen White was very close to her father. Jesus Christ, he talks to Jesus Christ as to a friend. Steps to Christ. The privilege of prayer. Amen? Talk to God. Pray to God as to a friend. So this is also a theme of Ellen White's writings. The cross... And salvation is very close. Christ was treated as we deserve. Wow. That we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for sins in which he had no share. That we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours. That we might receive the life which was his. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hindi ko talaga maintindihan yun. Friend, wala ka ng utang. Bakit? Nagbayad na ako eh. Huh? Friend, mabuti ka ng tao. Bakit? Ginawa ko na eh. He already has done everything for you. So that He becomes you and you become Him. Amen? Amen. Lahat na dapat ng pagbayaran, Ako nang bahala. Amen? Lahat ng dapat na meron siya, sa'yo na lahat. This is the divine mathematics. Amen? And I like this because this is righteousness by faith in its best. Christ crucified for our sins. Christ risen from the dead. Christ ascended on high is the science of salvation that we are to learn and to teach. So what science do you know? Biology? I would say the best science would be soteriology. Amen? The science of salvation. And the science of Christ is Christology. How do I understand Christ more? This is the highest science. In fact, this is the only science that would remain in heaven. Amen? Of course, as sabi ng mga agriculturist, meron din doon. Musicians, meron din. I don't care. But the highest, I'm talking about the highest. Amen? The highest. I'm talking about the highest. The sacrifice of Christ as an atonement for sin is the great truth around which all other truths cluster. So the, science, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the hub of all this uh, truth. In order to be rightly understood and appreciated, every truth in the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation must be studied in the light that streams from the cross of Calvary. So when you talk about anything else, talk 
in the context of the cross. Amen. Kanina, in the context of the love, in the context of great controversy, ngayon naman, in the context of the cross. Cross is the center of Christianity. Ah, yung iba, galit sa cross, Pastor. Sa Mindanao, pumunta kami sa ano, galit sila sa, sali, sa cross. Yung cross daw ay pagano at kung ano-ano pa sabi ko. Okay. Now, the centrality of the Bible. She also talks about the Bible and the Bible alone. Sola is scriptura. Another important theme in Ellen White's writings is the Bible and the written word of God. In his first book, in 1851, she wrote, I recommend to you, dear reader, the word of God as the rule of your faith and practice. This was the first book in 1851. Natapos niya bang isulat yan? Ah, sabi niya, in his word, God has committed to man the knowledge necessary for salvation. What is in the word of God? The salvation. The holy scriptures are to be accepted as authoritative, infallible revelation of His will. They are standard of, char of character, the revealer of the doctrines, and the test of experience. So, He exalts the word of God more than anything else. In, in fact, He exalts the word of God more than her own writings, life, and example. You should not make me a criterion of your life. Amen? You should go back to the Bible in order for you to know the truth. Amen? Napakaganda. Sabi, teaching the reproof in correction, instruction in which it, uh, in righteousness. Of course, she upholds the, the searching of the scriptures carefully to see what is true. And the truth can lose nothing by close investigation. Alam nyo, pag nagduda kayo sa Bible, pag-aralan nyo pa rin siya. Bakit? Kahit anong gawin nyo sa Bible, magre-reveal at magre-reveal pa rin ang tama at totoo. Kahit yung kinatatakutan nyo. One time, they were talking about Ellen, Ellen White. And Ellen White was like borrowing from other writers. Natakot ba ang White Estate na i-expose ito? Well, in the 1980s, medyo, medyo kinikip lang nila yung mga records ng mga researchers about the borrowing. But later... They opened it to the researchers. The, the researchers. Lah lahat ng mga researchers hanggang sa nakita na natin yung orthodoxy ngayon. Ngayon nakita na natin how does the prophecy operate? How does the inspiration operate in the Seventh-day Adventists? Now we have a clearer and better understanding of how the Holy Spirit works through the prophets. And na, na understand na rin natin kung paano in the prophets of old they under uh, they they uh, were inspired. So we should not fear. Huwag tayong matakot. Sa ganito, many, many will be lost because they have not studied their Bibles upon their knees with earnest prayer to God that the entrance of the Word of God might give light to their understanding. Ellen White was actually saying that you should not read the Bible because you are compelled to read. Read the Bible because you love it. I do not tell you to read your Bible. I want you to love reading your own Bibles. Amen. Sabi niya, you have to love to read it. How? The more you read it, the more you would love to read it. The less you read it, the less you love reading it. Why? Because our nature is not congenial to reading the Bible because it is not according to our nature. But the more and the more we read of it, the more it becomes part of us. Amen? So we would love to read it because we are what? Accustomed to be reading it. What about sin? At first, sin is what? Detestable to us. But the more we do sin, the more it becomes palatable. <laughs> diba? Especially with our nature. So, the Word of God is a great detector of, the, of error. Uh, to, of error. It will be, it, uh, to it we believe everything must be brought. Uh, brought. Now, ang sabi ni Ellen White, um, pag binasa mo ang Bible, Pag wala ka na sa Bible at gagawa ka na ng kabalbalan, kasalanan, magpa-puff up sa isip mo yung mga Bible text at bibigyan ka niya ng enough na kakayanan para i-resist ang temptation. Eh kung hindi ka nagbasa ng Bible, ano? Wala kang kakayanan kasi wala kang magamit na sword. Wala ka man lang maalala, walang fear na magkakaroon sa puso mo. And wala ring, there is no resistance whatsoever of sin and nature. And your nature, why? Because the Word of God is not there. But according to Psalm chapter 50, uh, chapter 119, verse 51, the Word of God quickens the soul. It gives us what? Life. 
So when you read the word of God, it gives you life. Uh, so the centrality of the Bible, we are to receive no one's opinion without comparing it with the scriptures, even if it, the, it comes from Ellen White. Pag wala yan sa scripture, hindi yan ang basis. All our doctrines are not based from Ellen White, di ba? All our doctrines are based from the Bible. Here is divine authority which is the supreme in its uh, matters of faith. It is the word of the living God. What about the second coming? What book focuses on the second coming? Oh, the last day events is just a compilation. What about exact book from Ellen White? A Maranatha is also a compilation. It is actually a devotional. What else? Huh? The Great Controversy. Uh, Spirit, of Pro uh, Spirit of Prophecy Volume 4. Focus also on the Reformation and, and on the last days uh, uh, of the G Jesus Christ coming. What else? The Story of Redemption is also a compilation in 1940s. In 1940s. So there are many compilations, but actually... Uh, uh, there are several books that Ellen White wrote. The reality of the nearness of the Advent dominated her life and shaped her writing career. In fact, when she writes as if Jesus Christ is coming in her lifetime. Nakita niyo ba yung tono ng kanyang pagsasalita? Don't worry about 144,000 because very soon you would know who will compose it. Oh, di ba? Very soon. Parang si Jesus Christ sabi niya, this generation will not pass. And you will see me in the clouds. Have... Did you get the tone? Parang talagang paparating na talaga. So nandun yung expectation. It's not a false hope. But you know, very soon, pag namatay ka mamaya, very soon, nandyan na si Jesus Christ. Amen? Very soon. The second coming is the focal point of the truth in the Bible. It is the climax of salvation in Christ. It signals the beginning of the end of the great controversy between good and evil. It is the supreme expression of God's love. It is the point of the three angels' messages and provides us the in, uh, incentive for Christian living. You know, without the second coming, you cannot live a Christian life because there is no hope. Ang second coming, lagi ang ano. Pagka tinignan mo lagi yung second coming, para siyang kasal. Kaya ka nang liligaw kasi alam mong may kasal. Kasi kung walang kasalan, tigilan na natin to kalokohan to. Di ba? Pero pag alam mong ikakasal, you know, it took me six years before we got married. But six years was so short if you're expecting for the greater one. Amen? Para napakabilis lang niya kasi in-expect ko talaga sa kanong kinasal kami dito sa PIC. Wow! Tapos hanggang ngayon, lagi kong sinasabihan yung asawa ko, salamat mami kasi pinili mo ako, sabi niya. Wala naman akong choice, syempre pinili mo ako eh. <laughs> yeah. bakit, bakit mo ba ako pinili mami? Sabi niya, kasi pinili mo ako eh. Sabi ko, eh, pw pwede ka namang ano eh, pwede mo namang hindi, hindi ano eh, tanggihan, saka pumunta sa iba eh. Sabi niya. <laughs> you know, the second coming, I think, is the upbeat of all the Christians. Forget about the second coming, you would be depressed. Tanggalin mo ang second coming ngayon. Mamaya-maya, magka-problema ka na. Meron ka na ang schizophrenia. Problemado ka na kaagad. Okay? I think the second coming is what? The, the, sabi, alam nyo, ang pumapatok na mga Seventh-day Adventists ngayon, yung mga, yung mga time bomb. Ang tawag ko yung mga time bomb. Ano yung mga time bomb? Yung mga nagta-time set. Napaparating na ang Panginoon sa September 21. Did you know that September 21 darating ang Panginoon? Sa Davao. At 23. Sa Davao. Kaya nagpresent ako doon, it was a special constituency meeting. Two, 300 attended. Five days, libre ng conference. Yung, yung ano, kasi may problema sila, time setting. So nagpresent ako, ang akin ay time bomb, the last day terrorism. Uh, gusto mo sirain ng church? Magsabi ka lang ng date kung kailan darating ang Panginoon. Lilipat lahat ng mga hindi nagbabasa ng Biblia at ng Spirit of Prophecy. Pupunta doon, at mamumundok at kung ano nang gagawin nila. Why? Because it is very exciting. It is like a, a marijuana, a narcotic within you. That when Jesus Christ is coming, I would do my best. And then when it fails, you become despondent and in despair. Ayaw mo na mag-70 Adventist. 
Yun ang nangyayari kapag ka nagsiset tayo ng time. So Ellen White said that after 2,300 days, after 1844, there would never be any exact literal date that we have to talk about. Let's talk about the work. Amen? Uh -huh. What else? Oh, the truth of the prophecy are bound up together and as we study them, they form beautiful clusters of practical Christian truth. Ellen White always points out to Daniel and Revelation. Diba? From time to time, sa niya, study the book of Daniel. Sa niya, study the, the river Ulai. Study the Daniel chapter 12. Lagi na lang study. Tapos sa niya, iba, Pastor, kailangan study ito. Sabi ko, study nga. Sabi, pag tinignan mo yan, chapter by chapter, sinasabi ni Miss White, study this, study that. Parang sinabi niya, study the whole Bible. Nitong isang araw lang, kinumpel ako, Pastor, sabi ni Ellen White, study Daniel chapter 12. It composed, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Sabi ko, Oo nga, study Daniel chapter 12. Eh pag pinakita ko naman sa iyo lahat ng sinabi ni Mr. Study Matthew chapter 5, study John chapter 3. Lahat naman ganun eh. Kasi bakit? Eh kasi addict si Mrs. White sa Bible eh. Intindihan niyo? Tapos gumagamit pa rin ng puro superlative. This is the highest. This is the most. This is the grandest puro mga ganun ng mga words. Ikaw naman pag kulpultor ka, para sa iyo kulpultor lang ang pwedeng sa buong mundo. Oh. Pagka pastor naman, hindi. Pastor ang pinakamataas. Pag teacher naman, teacher. Pag sabi nung nanay, nanay ang pinakamataas na gawain sa buong mundo. Pagka binasa mo lahat ng writing si Mrs. White, lahat may superlative. Tama mali. Kaya kapag binasa mo lahat ng writing si Mrs. White, tapos pinaniwalaan mo lahat at gagawin mo na para kang uto-uto. Oh? Kasi most, 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 hindi mo na alam kung magkukulpultor ka o magpapastor ka o magtiteacher o magnananay o magmimisyonary o mag-worker o mag-garden. Hindi mo na alam. Pero ginawa ito ni Ellen White para sa mag-fit sa'yo. Kung ikaw ay, kul ikaw ay kulpultor, nagbasa ka, adi, ano ka? Di ba? Hindi yung parang second tunan ako. ano sabi ni Pastor Lagarili sa second tunan? Mas maigi kesa sa wala. <laughs> Ang bihira. <laughs> Ang bihira. Some of Ellen White's most beautiful and inspiring writings was the connection with the events surrounding the second coming of Christ and the life. Have you read early writings? Have you read? Uh, meron akong book na binasa sa library. It, it's entitled Home at Last. The last chapter of uh, the last chapter of the world. Ah, para talagang parang nandyan na. Para talagang darating na. Seven days, maglalakbay tayo papunta sa langit. Makakausap natin si Moses. Kung ano, tapos maglalatag na napakalaking ba bangkete. Pagkatapos kakain tayo ng prutas na kalalaki. Pagkatapos makipunta. Pagkatapos, ay talagang parang totoong totoo. Wow. This is how Ellen White cent centralized her themes. Sabi na natin, nagbaro siya, nagbaro, nagbaro. Pero lahat ng binaro niya, pagka nireflect niya, daig niya yung kanyang pinag yung kanyang pinag-kopyahan. Uh, the Great Controversy, Chapter 40, God's People Delivered, and The Great Controversy Ended. This is my... Did you know that I first read The Great Controversy backward? The last chapter first, and then the first chapter last. Why? Because I like the last chapter first. Then I asked the question, how did this happen? Then I go back. How did this happen? Then I go back. And it was very rational. Because why? Because I have a question in my mind while I, reading, I was reading it. Amen? Hindi ko naman sinabing gawin nyo yun. Pero ang point ko dito, kasi gustong gusto ko ito eh. Great controversy ended. Did you know that Satan repented? And all bowed down to God? But when Satan finally said to himself, I've gone this far, sabi niya, I will not turn, I will not turn to God anymore. Nakakahiya. For eternity, ako nalang pag-uusapan lagi. Ha? Huh? Uh, the Lord is willing to put him into the, the same position. Ilalagay ulit siya sa same position. Pero sabi ni Satan, no. Kaya nung nag-back out sa lahat nung nag-bow down, nag-back out din. So this is the controversy ended. The last one is the third angel's uh, the second to last. In a special sense, seven day Adventist. I'd like you to read this very carefully. Can we read this? All together, ready, go. Yes. To them, 
on them they have made Now let me ask you a question. Have you re can you recite the first, second, and third angels message? Because this is the this is our message. The seventh day Adventist message. Huh? The seventh day Adventist has been set to the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them entrusted the last warning of perishing world. On them shining the wonderful life, the word of God. They have been given the word, the most solemn import, the proclamation, the first, second angel, three angels message. What are these three? Ano na nga ba yun? And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. Of course, ang sabi, uh, preaching the everlasting gospel to every nation, kindred tongue, people. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come and worship Him that made the heavens, the earth, and the springs of water. And then ano susunod? Babylon. Babylon has fallen, not made a... And then the third angel's message is, if anyone worship the beast in his image, the same shall receive the wrath of God without mixture. Now, all of these are very important. Why? Because this is the culmination of all that we know. Amen? We must reflect everything the three angels' message. In fact, there is the fourth angels' message. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4 says, Come out of her, my people. This will join the three angels' message in the loud cry. Amen? So we must understand this. We must understand it. Why? Because without understanding, we might not be prepared for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We might perceive that we are prepared, but if we do not know the events and the message that comes before it, we shall not be part of the faithful. Of the faithful. Ayoko na makipagdebate sa faithful. Sinabi faithful, 144,000 na kaagad ang iniisip ng iba. Whatever it is, we need to be faithful in the three angels' message. Those who are faithful with the three angels' message actually belong to the 144,000. Pagkabinasa natin yan. Okay? So, actually, the first writings of Ellen White focus more on the 144,000, early writings. Puro 144,000 sa early writings. And so, she is actually focused on Revelation chapter 14. And she tells... The message of the 144,000 is the three angels' message, and all the faithful shall belong to this uh, to this number. There is no other work so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. The three angels' message should not be blurred. The most solemn truth ever entrusted to morals have been given to us to proclaim to the world. The proclamation of this truth is to be our work. The world is to be warned and God's people are to be true to the trust committed to them. The first and just message is a call of humanity to worship God, prepare for the arrival of judgment. The second and just message announces Babylon proclaims that the human system of salvation are not valid in the eyes of God. And third... <clears throat> When Christ entered the most holy place, the heavenly sanctuary performed the closing word atonement and committed, he committed to his servants the last message of mercy to be given to the world, such as warning the third angel's message. Revelation 14, immediately following the proclamation, the Son of God is seen by the prophet coming in glory to reap the harvest of the earth. So, after the three angel's message was the reaping. Tama? The reaping was done after the three. So, Wala nang ibang message before the coming of Christ except the three angels' message. Kasi it's also reaping. It was dividing the tares and the wheat. It was dividing the... Where, uh, the uh, <clears throat> okay? It was... So, the, the three angels' message are to be proclaimed that salvation in Christ, the eternal gospel, obedience to the commandment of God, fear God and keep His commandment, observe the Sabbath that made the heavens, the earth, and the springs of water, the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Okay? This is the three angels' message. And this will be proclaimed by the people having the faith in Jesus, meaning trusting in Jesus as our sin-pardoning Savior, according to 
um, uh, manuscript 24, 1888, and believing in the teaching of Jesus Christ found in the Bible in biography, page 404. So believing the, uh, the teachings of Jesus. <clears throat> it is easy to see how Ellen White's extensive writings of righteousness by faith, the law of God, the Sabbath, and the great controversy and other topics are related to the three angels' message. In fact, she writes all of this connected together simultaneously within these seven themes. From time to time, pag kami binanggit sa ng mga text, lagi niyang ibabalik sa great controversy uh, and all of this. But what is often overlooked is that we forget about her writings on education, councils on health, on publishing, on gospel ministry are also connected to the three angels' message. Our publishing ministry was not just a product of anything but these themes. Habang <clears throat> si James White ay nagpipreach, halos maluwa-luwa na siya ng kakapipreach, ang sabi ni Ellen White, the Lord tells me that you have to begin to publish small trucks. And when you would begin to publish trucks, you'll be sending this to people and the means will be given you so that you can publish more. And then the spreading of all this literature becomes an autumn leaves that would encircle the earth and enlighten the whole world. Yan yung logo natin ng publishing. And why? Because the three angels' message will be published and it will be spread all throughout the world. And culpultors are needed to finish this gospel. The everlasting gospel. Now, ang ayaw makipag-participate sa kulpultor, hindi naman siya nanay na nag-aalaga ng bata. Wala naman din siyang ginagawa. Ang sabi ng mga missionary, if you are not a missionary, you are a mission field. Or much more, a mission failed. <laughs> mission failed. But what is of we should look at this in the light of the three angels' message. Advent education is to train young people to spread the third angel's message. The Adventist health message is to provide people in better health so that they can, uh, they can more adequately preach. Please, do not equate health message for salvation. Although salvation is like sanctification, is also salvation, but more on the mission or the missiological purpose of health. Bakit tayo nag health for missiological purposes. Oh, meron akong topic na is meat eating sin. Oh, ang ganda nun, no? Tapos, if meat eating is sin, it's uh, connected with Ellen White and vegetarianism. And uh, sadly to say that even Ellen White, you know, sometimes pinch meat, eat this a little, and thus it mean that uh, she would not be saved because after 1863, she would eat, still eat some little of this? Ganun ba yun? And sometimes we are overshrouded with what? With our own doctrines formulated within our minds that it overpowers the three angels' message. Sayang, ginawa ang health para i-overpower yung salvation. So, hindi natin pwedeng gawin ang health na mas mataas kaysa sa, sa gospel. Gospel is higher than health. Not health higher than the gospel. Okay. The publishing and the gospel ministries are to spread the last message to the dying world. Practical Christianity and the development of Christian character. Uh, no, don't get me wrong, huh? Ellen White. I hope you could download. We have a sa ellenwhite.org. You can download Ellen White and vegetarianism. There was a complete comprehensive explanation of whether Ellen White kept the health message by herself. And... Uh, Masasyak kayo that in 1894, actually in 1894, she pledged that she would not put any meat on the table for, because from time to time, there are emergencies that she cannot actually um, pro, uh, yung avoid, that she would eat some of it, but you know she would fear that more and more, pagka kumain siya ng kaunti, parang gusto na niyang kumain ng mas malaki. And these are emergencies places noon kasi wala pang market na kagaya natin ngayon and all of this i hope you would read it so that you would not equate vegetarianism with salvation but much more of mission amen mission 
rather than salvation. The true Christianity is not something that touches people only when they are in church, but it transforms people from inside out. So I hope Seventh-day Adventists would manifest the three angels' message in their lives, starting from the love of Christ. Christianity changes the heart. And I like this. Lahat ng mga yon is for Christian character development. Wow! Amen? Ang lundo ng lahat ng writings ni Mrs. White, the most important work ever entrusted to man is character development. And never before was it what is diligent study so important as now. Kung meron man dapat pag-aralan ng Seventh-day Adventist, yan ay ang kanang Christian character. Why? Because without Christian character, we will not be saved? No, 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 no. Because salvation leads to the development of character. School, work, and recreation. All of this, umiikot-ikot within the realm of the practical Christianity that Ellen White was actually writing. To, um, to end, let me read this from Selected Messages. Wherever there is union with Christ, there is love. Amen? Wherever other fruits we bear, whatever other fruits we bear, if love be missing, they profit nothing. Love to God and our neighbors is the very essence of our religion. Tandaan nyo, there are four, four aspects of life. Spiritual, mental, so uh, spirit, uh, physical, and social. Which is the last one? Social. Why? Because social is the result of all the three. Pag maayos ka socially, siguro maganda ang kain mo. Maayos siguro ang tulog mo, siguro nagbasa ka ng Bible mo, at may relasyon ka sa Diyos. Pero pag ang ugali mo ganyan, it proves na walang nagawa sa iyo yung three aspects. Amen? Social ability is the product of Christianity. The product of Christianity is sociability. Tell me who, uh, tignan kita kung ano ka ngayon. Alam ko na kung ano ka talaga. Did you get the point? So I would say, napakaraming mga vegetarian, pero cannibal ang ugali. Makain sila ng tao, harapan. Pero hindi talaga sila dumadampot kahit konti, kahit itlog. Pero ang ugali, mga kapatid, ang ugali, ang ugali, hindi madikita ng kahit sino. Then I would say, I don't think heaven is for them. Why? Because heaven would not be happy with them. Napakalungkot ng langit kung sila ay mapupunta doon. No one can love Christ and not love his children. Amen? A lovable man is a product of a lovable God. Of a loving God. When we are united to Christ, we have the mind of Christ. Purity and love shine forth in the character. Meekness and truth control the life. Meekness, I like this. Meekness, masunurin. Hindi ma pride. The very expression of the countenance is changed. Christ abiding in the soul exerts the transforming power and the outward ex ex aspects bears witness to the peace, joy that reign within. Alam nyo, pag nagkulpultor na kayo, hindi naman tinitignan nila yung ganda ng libro nyo eh. Totoo? Hindi naman eh. Tinitignan nila pag anghel kayo, kahit anong libro yan, bibili lahat yan. Amen? Naalala ko nung nagkulpultor ko sa, sa Makati. Pagdating ko doon, hindi na tinignan yung libro. Pinakain ako. Tinignan ang matipin. Inobserbahan yung kada kilos namin, dalawa, nung aking kasamang kulpultor. Pagkatapos, tinatanong, ah, sige. Tapos pinagpray ko sila. Maya-maya, kumuha na ng telepono. Mare! May mga anghel dito. Papasukin mo at bilhin mo lahat ng libro. Amen? Ni hindi man lang binuklat yung libro, binili na lang lahat. Amen? So I would say, it's not about the message. It's about the witness of a silent life. The continence, the love that, it, you know, that abounds and explodes and flows. Sight, you know, tuloy-tuloy. Uh, tuloy-tuloy <laughs> mula sa atin. May the love of Jesus Christ be seen in each and every culpultor here in this auditorium. Would you like to make all this theme the theme of your life today? Amen? If this is your commitment, would you like to be with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift 
Thank you that this gift was manifested also consistently in the life of Ellen G. White, the character of Jesus Christ. We know, Lord, that she is not perfect. From time to time, there are things that reveals her own um, weakness. There are letters, Lord, that she would ask forgiveness from James White, that she is not perfect. And yet, we benefit from the writings. We benefit from the themes, from the reflection of the motherly love as a manifestation of the love that comes from Jesus Christ. When she was a child, she dreaded for the time of her own death because she is not prepared to die, because she is not prepared to go to hell. And yet, Lord, with your promises from the scriptures, she was encouraged, just like, just like Martin Luther, that indeed salvation does not come from our own righteousness. It comes from the love of Jesus Christ freely given. Today, Lord, we hold on to the promises that Jesus died for us. We thank you that from the reflection of Ellen G. White, we would go back again to that reflection and see the clear love that comes from the throne of God. And thank you for sending Jesus Christ to us. Thank you, Lord, that the Bible is consistently drawing us to Jesus Christ. Thank you that the Spirit of Prophecy is consistently drawing us to Him. And yet, there is a task for us, Lord, to consistently draw our fellow men to Jesus Christ in the Scripture. Lord, please bless the young people here in this auditorium. Please bless each and everyone who wants to be used for the, for the, king, for the three angels' message, for the message to be given to all. And yet, Lord, please sanctify us. Sanctify our thoughts. Make us consistently Christ-like in our life. And if we have sinned, Lord, please may the blood of Jesus Christ mixed with the faith that you have given us, Lord, that we may go back to you, repent, and believe that you will pardon our sins, that you will bring us to character development and that we would be seen as one that is consistent to the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity given to us today, this evening. And bless us, Lord, in Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen.